So, I guess before we uh, add Mr. Pollock into the call, we should probably introduce proper. Hi, this is the SOL Gamer Group. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. That's Hi. right. Hi. That's where I am. I'm not at the bar. <clears throat> uh, yeah, my name is Evan. This is Talk Moonlight Kitsune from his new den. Togpie222. This is Drazar from my dungeon that the SOLers keep me in. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Blue Hedgehog 2010. Is it um, really a dungeon if you fit it out yourself? Look, you just gave me, like, pieces of tapestry and a couple teddy bears, and I rearrange them every day just to pass the time. <laughs> yes, it's a dungeon. Well, if you're that I bored, mean, I can put can a can still have, like, there. satin bed sheets, but, I mean, if he's still stuck in there... <laughs> if you're Only that because bored, I, told I can put a rack you, in there. I'm allergic to satin, which you all laughed at. <laughs> Who's allergic to satin? I uh, know it's Satan I'm allergic to. Uh, you know, <laughs> my dyslexia sometimes. Anyways. Satan, satin. Um, we have... <laughs> only the, only demonic bedsheets could be as comfortable as those. Um, it's what you have to pay for them. That's the yeah. cost. We are together here for an opportunity. We are actually going to it's be a interviewing a voice actor. <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. Voice, yeah. Um, the voice actor's name is Mike Pollock. You may know him as Dr. Eggman. Among other and, things. Yeah. So, um, without further ado, let's go on ahead and add him into the call. Yes, please. Okay. I mean, Let's do totally this. cool with that. Okay, come on. I can spell his name correctly. Is there, is there a script we're following or something? No. No. <laughs> so. No script. So, so what? So what are we doing then? So we're just gonna. Oh, so we're just gonna ask him questions. Um. Mm -hmm. Am I still coming through? Clearly? You can. Yeah, yeah yes. you are. Um, Am I in better? If you need to, you can refer to this uh, wiki page. And um, we're just going to go ahead and start things off with him introducing himself and explaining a little bit about himself before, you know, we ask gonna, questions. We're going to go, like, round-the-clock questions, right? Like, yeah. one person, then one person, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. As okay. best we can. As best we can. So do we just want to make the do we want to make the order now or is that going to be part of the fun? That'll be part of the fun. No, it's oh, first Lord. comes we, first serve. Do we ask Hell him? If, do we ask him if it's the more the merrier? <laughs> it's first come first serve. <laughs> you know what they say: <laughs> the more the merrier. <laughs> okay, come on, you jokers. Let's get this on the road. Alrighty. <laughs> I'm not the one trying to spell his name here. <laughs> so. Without further ado, let's go on ahead and add Mike Pollock into the call. Yes. Oh, he's even got his picture. Oh, well, half of his picture is loading on my screen. <laughs> Same. None of it are mine. I got the full thing. Oh, good for you, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> so proud. Oh, wait. There's part of it. Oh, uh, I got half. He's processing in now. Mm -hmm. It's just giving me this half face stare that concerns me. <laughs> <coughs> Guilty <coughs> feelings Voices arise within me. Oh, nope, there he is. Oh, he's. Oh, uh, said he was busy. Mm. Bit of a. It, see, he was joining us, right? Difficult too. Yeah, yes, I did ah. contact him on Facebook, so. Hello. There he is. Oh, there, oh, there we go, Mr. Pollock. Yeah. Hi there. So. We are the SOL Gamers, and we are here because you've given us an opportunity to interview you. I'm still trying to figure out how Gary pulled this off. Amen. <laughs> Our well, connectivity. Well, I mean, this all started with him sending, you know, me an autographed picture on my birthday. So I remember that. Great. Still have it. Um, I, I mean, I'd hope. Yeah. I mean, definitely. But, um... Mr. Pollock, if yes. you uh, if you can uh, introduce yourself and 
tell the rest of our viewers you know, what you do for a living? Sure. I'm Mike Pollock. I'm a voice actor. Most people know me as the... What? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Wife problems. No, no bounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you're talking to your wife. I don't know for sure. What? No, I was trying to. The Skype is being Skype. Oh, <laughs> well, yes, we can still it does. Hear you that. just fine, though. Yeah, we can. Perfect. Well, let's start over. Hi, I'm Mike Pollock. I'm a voiceover uh, actor. Most people know me as Dr. Eggman from the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. That's among many of the things that I do. I do other characters, I do commercials and narrations and promos and animation and all sorts of stuff. My goal is to keep working as long as possible, whenever possible. Excellent. Good goal for me. Yeah, as long as Sonic's still around, he'll have a solid at, um, role as Eggman. <laughs> well, well. One, one can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, not only has um, Mike Pollock has taken a role of Dr. Eggman, but, you know, as he mentioned... He, He's done other things. Um, as I pull up from this Wikipedia page of knowledge, um, you've done plenty of things, and I'm pretty sure um, Drazar will be happy to interview someone that's actually done the narrator for the few Pokemon films. I was going to mm -hmm. say, actually, if I can take over, because we all know that some people may know Dr. Eggman, but I see on the Wikipedia page your breakout role has to be the 2004 narrator for the Pokemon movie. That's <laughs> That's got to be it. Uh, that's open to debate, but if you'd like to call that a breakout <laughs> role, go right ahead. <laughs> um, so, Gary, do you want to... Do you want to ask the first question, Gary, since you're the one that got this all together? Alrighty. Where do I even begin? Oh, Lord. Well, I guess we can start with... Hmm, what got you into voice acting to begin with? I loved radio as a kid. Uh, Old-time radio, new-time radio, the magic of radio. And when I got into college, I was working in radio for a while and uh, ended up working uh, at a couple of local uh, Syracuse, New York radio stations, and then some Rochester, New York radio station, and then a syndicated radio outfit, and finally realized that what I really enjoyed was doing wacky commercials as part of the, the characters and stuff that I would, I would do as part of my radio responsibilities. So once radio took the corporate turn that it did, I branched out and just started uh, doing voiceover stuff. Because there's no pesky radio uh, management involved. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I can see that. Oh, man. Um, Was it difficult man. getting into that industry, though? Not really. I sent out uh, some demo cassettes at the time because that's how long ago it was, even though it wasn't that long ago. I don't, um, I don't mean radio. I mean the... Like getting in, getting into the uh, voiceover voice acting. Well, I, I think that's what he means. Oh. Yeah, no, I, I sent out. Uh, I I put together a demo reel for my radio syndication character work. Uh, put that on together into a cassette. Sent out cassettes, and uh, one of the first responses was for um, an anime called Demon Fighter Kocho. Awesome. Not the world's best. But, uh, <laughs> it was it was my first anime role. And then uh, the next thing you got was a uh, cameo one-time appearance on Pokemon. And that Woo! introduced me to the folks at 4Kids, and they remembered me when they started creating more stuff. <laughs> so it probably honestly, should have been harder, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, uh, quite glad they did remember you, because uh, Gary and I both agree that your work as Dr. Eggman is pretty excellent and on par. So, excellent. Just my comp <laughs> yes, excellent. <laughs> you wish to make that fun. <laughs> so awful. Everyone does. There we go. I'm sure you hear it enough. <laughs> um, I actually have a question that may or may not be one you've heard before. Um, and I'll, I'll just go into a little synopsis. One of my uh, one of my bucket list things is to eventually get a character created either from my likeness or from a fictional representation of myself. Have you ever purchased? Like any merchandise of characters that you've played as, just as kind of memorabilia or anything like that? 
most of them. If merchandise is available and I can find it, I'll buy it. Excellent. That's excellent to hear. <coughs> well, I've got one about one of your roles. It says here that you uh, played Ella in uh, yes, Sonic X. Yes, I did. X. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, how was that? How interesting was that playing somebody from the opposite gender? Uh, it's just another acting challenge. It made me laugh almost every time I recorded it, but <laughs> I'm an actor, that's my job. Hand me a script and I'll bring it to life. Yeah, I can't argue with that. It's just okay. an interesting, it's just an interesting a, thing. If you have a job that makes you laugh, you're set. Yeah. Absolutely. I say, especially if they pay you while you're laughing, that's great. Yeah, well, they pay me once I stop laughing. If I would, oh, okay. Session, <laughs> they probably wouldn't pay me at all. Where, where's my money? I'm, I'm not going to laugh if you don't pay me. <laughs> uh, um, did you have a question, Evan? Uh, I was going to actually. I was going down the list, and I was wondering. Um. Uh, you are. Still, the role for Doctor Eggman and the upcoming Sonic Boom television series. Yes. Sonic Boom series. It's currently on. Oh, I. Yes. Yes. Evan's um, a little behind on the time. The one that premiered November eighth. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well. Um. So how has uh? I'm not going to ask for any spoilers or anything. But how has uh, recording been for that project so far? Uh, our recording for the first season's already wrapped, so our work is oh, done. Oh wow. You know, they're just wow. animating the rest of them. But eight, ep- eight episodes have already aired. <laughs> it was quite quick work, I suppose, although with you know a large enough studio and enough funding. Well, it took us uh, a year to record the first uh, series. Oh, did it? Yeah, and it takes oh. about a year from a year to uh, finish the animation. So it's um. it seems like a short period of time, but I guess when you count up all the months, it's been quite a while. <laughs> So yeah, do right. do most of your uh, projects and where you are a voice uh, voice actor for an animated character do those usually take about a year per season on average? It depends on on the project. If it's uh, a dubbing thing, uh, it'll each session may take an hour or two, mm-hmm. uh, and then there's about a three or four month lead time before it hits the streets or the TV or wherever it's going to be broadcast. But if it's being animated from scratch, plan on a year. Mm. Interesting. But the actual recording time for each episode is about two hours. Huh. I'm always interested in the uh, production process of Mm -hmm. both animated uh, series as well as um, games in general. Uh, I continuously, on a daily basis, serenade Gary and company about this, that, and the other involving development. So, And all my thoughts therein. Lovely. <laughs> yes, I'm sure they enjoy it when it goes on for two hours at a time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Freaking lootly. Uh, we love you for it, Evan. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yes, we it's do okay. love I get you, it. Evan. We do. I know, I know. Um, Mr. Pollock, I got another question for you. Um, again, kind of going through your going through your stuff here. It doesn't I don't believe you've had any like uh, physical acting jobs before, as opposed to voice? Have you? Um, on camera stuff, uh, yeah. extremely little, hardly worth mentioning. Okay, uh, um, I have a question then. If you had the opportunity both to be more on film physically and the choice of kind of what kind of character would be a dream character role for you to play, what do you think you would choose for that? If someone was desperately interested in having me on screen, I would definitely consider it. I'm an actor and my job is to act but I specifically enjoy the magic of creating mental pictures with my voice. So oh. voice acting has been my concentration. But oh. uh, I like comedy, so put me in something funny, but I also <laughs> have no problem tackling drama. So Very if good. someone was so desperate to have me, let's talk. But beyond that, it, it, the, the time commitment versus the amount of time you're actually working on set is unbearable for my short attention span. <laughs> well, well, plus with voice acting, you don't have to worry so much about what you are wearing or what you look like at the time. Absolutely. There's no there's no makeup, there's no wardrobe, there's no memorization of lines. You can come in I'm your paid pajamas. I'm loud. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm, 
I am paid to read aloud, a skill I've been perfecting since approximately second grade. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I have another question. Um, you know, you've assumed so many roles. Um, I see in this list um, if this website is not lying to me. Um, you've also done some voice work for a Flash animation called Go Go Parody Rangers? Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> so, um, I wanted to ask, what role were you playing as? I was the giant eyeball who had a oh, name. Oh, you were that. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's been like a, you know, it's been like a good while since I've watched the Flash animation myself. Um, but you know, you know, your voice sounds familiar, and it's like, is this Mike Pollock? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, um, so, so you you've done, you know, a lot of roles, uh, you know, ranging from. Um, you know, radio talk to voiceover work for certain animes and cartoons, as well as flash animations. Um, was there anything else that you were interested in aside of voice acting? Uh, well, there was radio back when radio was a, a different thing than it is now. And yeah. what I'm doing now is an extension of radio. But, no, my, my skill has been way, making funny voices. I write comedy occasionally on the side, but it's much more time-consuming. <laughs> okay, I've got another one. There we go. From the uh, game Sonic Generations, how did it feel to monologue alongside yourself? Just reading down the page. It was not as hard as everyone thinks it was. <laughs> Put a script in front of me, and I read down the page. Especially <laughs> since it was essentially the same voice. It was quite easy. Yeah, I would have wagered that it wouldn't have been too difficult. Yeah, was I just had this any? funny image in my head that he records one section, or and then you read the uh, counterpart to it. Well, well I'd it was, wager... I'd wager it was something kind of along the lines of just like knowing how to give the definition to or the definition of each sentence ending so that it doesn't sound too much like the exact same person. Well, they wanted it to sound like the exact same person. If it sounded any different, they didn't do it right. <laughs> oh well. Um What the director says I, goes. Well, I, I actually chose poor words there. Um <laughs> the exact same uh was it uh sentence, run on sentence. That's what it is, I think. But yes. Yeah, the trick is keeping them separate in my head, but when I'm yeah. actually doing it, it's just me reading down the page. Oh, yeah. I'm reading one line. Now the next line. Here's a different line. Now I'm reading a fourth line. <laughs> uh, both in radio and in voice acting, did you have any names that you really looked up to to kind of you know, help establish how you wanted your career to go? Any heroes in both aspects that you look up to still? Uh, there was, uh, in radio, there was a guy in uh, New York named Gene Claven, who was uh, brilliant at doing characters. He he could do a whole bunch of characters simultaneously, which which I always found fascinating. And uh, in the animation world, uh, Mel Blanc obviously was uh, oh, a yeah. legend. Uh, but uh, Bill Scott, the man behind Bo uh, Bullwinkle and Dudley Do-Right, um, and Mr. <laughs> Peabody, um, Rocky <laughs> oh, Bullwinkle wow, and his friends, yeah. I heard a legend. I haven't ages. Two idiots and a genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like ample um, inspiration for, like, say, voicing Dr. Eggman. Yeah, I guess. Well, the, the Mel Blanc uh, Yosemite Sam aspect comes up a lot in Dr. Eggman. <laughs> <laughs> I can kind of see that now, actually. Wow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Uh. If I can take the question just one step further real quick then. Um, seeing that you have such success in your stuff, do you feel like you've achieved kind of the 
ideas that you have in your career close to what you were comparing to your uh, not necessarily mentors but to your inspiration mm, no there were there were big uh, prime time animated shows that I've not been part of yet and big time uh, animated feature films that I've not been part of yet so okay. those would be nice to do ah there we go Um, Don't everybody all at once now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I had a, I had a question forming in my head. Um, during your voice acting career, in terms of video games, was there a certain game you weren't looking forward to voicing as Doctor Eggman, or you're just used to it to this point? I love working. The fact that people pay me to read aloud is a never-ending wonder. So, no, my job is not to pass judgment on the game. My job is to show up and make my clients happy. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, so by that logic, I would assume you probably don't play too many... You don't have the time to play too many of the games you voice in. And I've never been a gamer, so... I've, I've, they, they hire me because I'm an actor, and I know how to make my voice do stuff. Oh, so, yeah. I've never been a gamer. Understandable. So, um, a question kind of in, uh, in a similar area as Ryan's questions were, uh, what was your, what was the greatest challenge you encountered, uh, either during or while trying to get your career started? The continuing challenge of not booking auditions, and that, that continues to this day. <laughs> yeah. The recording is not the work. The, re the recording is the fun part. Looking for work is the work. So I bang out dozens of auditions every week and don't book most of them. Hmm. So, this comes with another question of mine. Did you find the seven crystal rings? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Not unless the script tells me to. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Uh, well. So do you hear that yeah. question often, or... <laughs> oh, it shows up now and again. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. It's kind of a little offbeat of the topic we've been at, but there's one there was one particular role of yours that I really appreciated and really liked the series it was in. I wanted to ask you about it. Um, in the Magic Users Club, you uh, yes. voiced one of the uh, journalists in the first in the first episodes that aired. I am not even going to try pronouncing the name because I know I will butcher it to hell. <laughs> but I th I remember a couple of the pr a couple particular episodes that that particular character was in. Did you get to see any of the actual animation while you were recording, or did you only get to see that afterwards? Those are all dubs. So they're, they're dubbed from Japanese, so we are always watching the animation as we're, as we're dubbing them so we can match the lip flap. So, yeah, anything that's been dubbed from another language, uh, we are watching as we're recording. Were there any particularly awkward moments with that particular anime? Because one moment in particular I'm thinking of, your character is uh, kind of looking up the skirt of another of a female characters, and I'm just wondering what was going through your mind when you were dubbing. Anime is 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 a string of, of odd moments, uh, from my experience. <laughs> so, oh yes, it anytime is. I'm dubbing an anime, there's always something weird. And what? What is? What's got? What? So, <laughs> do you yeah, have to watch I just the animation before you can do the. Well, he he watches it while. Well, do, do you watch it once before and then record? Hmm. Depends on uh, how much time they've allotted for the session. Okay. Um, some directors are happy with, let's just try this and see where, how it works. Because they can always do <laughs> digital surgery after the fact, with stretching and squeezing and editing. But some directors like to uh, watch each line and uh, make sure that I see what's going on so that I have a better shot of uh, getting it right on the first take. Okay, I was just curious about uh, anything interesting that went on during that recording session. That's yeah. over 10 years ago, and it's impossible yeah. to have specific memories at this point. All right, fair enough. I just figured if there was anything memorable, it would have stuck around. <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, most of, many of those have outtakes at the end, so the memorable stuff would have made it to outtakes. <laughs> yes. I can imagine. Um, I can only imagine that um, around that time that you're voicing over dubbed animation, um, you know, first time around, and when you get around to your row, and there happens to be some interesting scenes, pretty sure there's been moments where you're like, hmm, well, I would, uh, whoa, what, wait, what? Yeah. Yep. As someone who, uh, oh, continue, sorry, sorry. No, I'm, I'm there to breathe life into the script, so whatever the script calls for, that's what they <laughs> need me to do. Yes, yeah. as someone who watches uh, quite quite a hefty amount of anime, there are some things that occur that I just think <coughs> I should really consider the material that I watch. <laughs> I had a, had a question kind of in relation to Claire's um, on an opposite spectrum for things that haven't been pre-rendered like anime where you just go back and watch the footage before or during the recording. Has there ever been a time that you've done a recording without having seen anything about the character and then seen it later? Lots of times. Is there ever been Sonic a time? Boom is, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sonic Boom is all like that. Is like that. I've, obviously, I've seen the characters before, but mm-hmm. I have no idea what the scene's going to really look like, except for what's written in the script as a description. Um, but lots of uh, the commercials I do. If I if I do commercials that are ending up on TV, the visuals may not be done yet. Um, but any prelay animation, you're going to see character sketches and maybe a storyboard, but you're not going to see anything moving for the most part. So has there ever been a time you uh, put your life behind a character and when it comes time that you actually get to see what it looks like, it's somewhat opposite of what you were kind of picturing in your head? Mm, Not really, because at the very least I will have an image of the character. Actually, that's not entirely true. For the side characters on Sonic Boom, uh, Fastidious Beaver and Mayor, uh, the Mayor, Mayor Fink, uh, I never saw them. They just told me what they wanted them to sound like, and I did my best oh. to make them sound the way they wanted. But the producers, everything that happens is in the capable hands of the producers. So once they are happy with the, the audio recording, it's out of my control. Okay. Now, um, aside of, you know, because I frequent your Facebook page as often since you're my friend on there and all that um i see you frequent uh, conventions every once in a while you know meeting up with um you know uh, what was that fellow's name jason griffith i believe that's his name it's something like that um do you and i'm pretty i'm pretty sure because when you you know, frequent conventions. I'm pretty sure it's it's an exhilarating feeling to have, you know, people, you know, run up to you and be like, "Oh, it's Doctor Eggman," or "It's that guy that voices Pokemon," or you know, um, I'm pretty sure, you know, you enjoy every single moment of that, you know, you know, despite if it has its flaws and setbacks and... Awkward moments, you mean? Awkward moments, yes. Thank you, Evan. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. I think the general uh, consensus of the question is um, your feelings on uh, when you attend conventions, the the reaction you get from fans who recognize you and, you know, attempt to run up and greet you and so on and so forth. Thank you for the translation, Evan. <laughs> I do my best. Yes, thank you. It's the other half of the equation. Uh, having come from live theater uh, in my younger days and the immediate reaction from a live audience, you don't get that when you're recording. You get the reaction of the people on the other side of the glass, but you tend to forget what the people watching are experiencing. So it's always nice to see that people like what I do, even if it takes several months before that reaction happens. <laughs> Delayed a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so. Okay, this is 
<laughs> we'll go on ahead, kids. This is a question that's been bugging me since Gary said that he managed to snag you for this interview. How in the heck did he manage to convince you to talk to us? <laughs> he asked. Ah. It's as simple I as that. see. The mystery has been solved. Mm-hmm. And here I was thinking he somehow managed to bribe you with some stolen gold or something. <laughs> I say, I had, no, no. had my best scientists on the field trying to figure that out. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. Dr. Eggman so has simple. no use for power rings. <laughs> At least not in the not in the games. <laughs> um, um, I had a question in my head. Um, you should keep it closed up a bit more. I mean, yeah, put some tape I over know, your ears or something. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. Did you? Um, during your voice career on, you know, modern video games ranging from 2008 to 2013 ongoing, um, was there a certain, was there a certain, uh, part in a video game that you were looking forward to, um, to have the line, you know, read out and precisely timed? There's usually not any chance to pre-read. I walk into the room and get the script and start recording. So there's no time on a video uh, game to uh, to prepare to that degree. So it's not like you have that moment where it's like, oh, it is time to shine. You just read it. No, I, I do my cold reading and uh, I take uh, a, a matter of seconds before I record to figure out what, I, what I'm going to do. And I do what I think best, and if the producers like it, then we have a winner and we move on. So, so did you get any training for that kind of improvisation, or is it just something you naturally picked up on? There are acting classes available. I didn't take enough of them to really have an impact. So, um, for me, it's mostly I just happen to be good at this. Woohoo! <laughs> Dice. Good to grasp on, you know, what you're natural at. So um, it would seem that uh, most of your uh, most of your recording for video games, at least uh, at the least, is done on the fly. You just walk into the studio, studio and they hand you a script. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. There's there's no rehearsal. There's really no prep time. But <laughs> there's really no need for it. It's it's a very time efficient, cost efficient business. You're scheduled in four hour blocks, and it's. You're scheduled here, someone else is scheduled before you, someone's scheduled after you. So, keep it moving. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, one of the big things that, like, a lot of video game voice actors uh, for bigger series that are based off of anime is, you know, the, the, the kind of animes where it's always powering up, the screaming and stuff like that. Do you have any roles like that you've had to do, or has it mostly just been words, words, words? Oh no! There have been lots of uh, violent, uh, battly, yelly things, and they leave me hoarse for a couple of days afterwards. But uh, uh, sure Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. I kind of, I kind of got that reference there. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that is the that is the biggest thing I've seen in background uh, talking about voice actors. Just how much they hate having to do the screamy parts, and I was wondering if you had to experience a lot of that, or if that's just something that mildly comes up from time to time. Sure, it's the nature of the business. If you know, if you're booked for a, a role and someone's going to die violently, you're, you're there <laughs> to give it your all. So I do. You sell them dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was it like to uh, voice Mayor Len Blustergus from Kirby right back at you? Uh, he was he was a fun little guy. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay on the subject of voice acting again not counting Dr. Eggman of all the voices you've done who is your favorite? I like voices that make me laugh so uh, meat from Ultimate Muscle with the, uh, the burly truck driver voice <laughs> and variations on that same theme which would be 
um, Bonaparte in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and Big O'Riki in uh, Go-Go Riki. I'll have that that uh, big, burly Bronx, Brooklyn truck driver guy. And that voice always uh, always makes me laugh. And also yeah. Ella the Maid for the same reason. The fact that they would cast me as Ella the Maid is hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. when it comes, I'm sorry. Was I interrupting anyone? Mm, nope. No. Okay. Um, so when when it comes to you know voice acting, um, do you usually spend the time at home to record the lines that you are given, or are you just scheduled to come into a certain studio to start reading the lines out? In most cases, I'm going to a studio, but depending on the budget of the production, I can and do record from home. Many of my auditions happen at home, and some less than reputable uh, <laughs> video games and uh, animated shows have also been recorded at home. Because as long as I'm here, it doesn't really matter where here is. Um, I had something, and then I just lost it. Well, while you guys think on that, I got another one. In a similar vein to my earlier question about your favorite uh, actors, or characters, wow, Um, of all the voices you've done, what's the one you, or what are the ones you don't like the most? If that made Uh, any sense. Yeah, the the main problem are directors who are less than uh, friendly to work with. So there's uh, one guy who is... uh, He's known for being abusive. He will verbally abuse his talent, and that makes uh, the desire for the session to be over quite quickly uh, (laughs) to be the order of the day. But other than that, even if it's a boring medical narration, the fact that someone is paying me to read read aloud, that's really cool. Um, I actually remembered my question now. Just um, from the time gap of how much you've done recording... Has the technology that the recording industry has brought forward, uh, how do you feel about from going all the way back to radio to now? How much of a time jump in technology, how do you feel about that? Uh, When I was in radio, everything, uh, for the most part, was on uh, quarter-inch reel-to-reel tape. And I can still, should the need arise, I can edit with a razor blade and splicing tape. And I'm very proud of that. Very cool. Uh, Impressive. But by the time I got into uh, animation and stuff, the transition to digital technology was in full effect. And the um, surgery that needs to be done to make uh, crappy takes sound good uh, is even more magical. Very cool. Uh, And um, looking um, through your... um, (laughs) biography uh, page on your website um i'm pretty sure you know i'm pretty sure you know you have a supportive family that supports you with the work that you do um trying to really wear this without coming out to be odd Uh, (laughs) um What does your family think of the job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was Ladies about to say, and if somebody doesn't do it, I will. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are the translators for Gary. <laughs> That's Simplicity, a- dear. Simplicity. They love it as far as I can tell. They'll watch stuff that I'm in and seem to enjoy it and seem to be proud of me. So that's good. Yes, it is. Actually, actually, uh, that that brings another question to my mind. Um, oh, well, Whoa. I cut off for a second there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my fault. Um, with the change in technology that's just uh, been so rapidly progressing over the years, um, when you originally started with radio and all of that, uh, did you have to travel far from where you lived in uh, any case, like when going to the studios and such? In most cases, I was moving for the job, um, but I grew up in Long Island, New York, and then went up to Syracuse, New, uh, New York for uh, an education at Syracuse University, got my first radio gigs, my first paid radio gigs, 
uh, in Syracuse, then got a job in Rochester for a year, and moved to Rochester, and then moved down to New York for my syndication gig, and I've been a New York-based actor ever since. So now the moving moving involves traveling from home in, into Manhattan and then traveling from studio to studio wherever I happen to be on a particular day. So, um, so what's the farthest you've ever gone for a job? Uh, occasionally, I get uh, sent out west to record with the rest of the Sonic Boom cast. So, three thousand miles across the country. Hmm. They and, do. Uh, you guys record that, together. Right? Yes, of course. Rarely. Well, rarely. Yeah. In most cases, we'll, we record together but separately. I'll be in New York. They'll be in LA, and we'll be talking to each other just like this on Skype. So, so uh, in, we react in to genuine, but we're just we're not there. On that note, um, what what cases do call for you to actually uh, meet up with the rest of the cast and record together? Uh, when we were. Uh, first essentially workshopping the show and they were messing around to see what would work they uh, sent me out for some experimental recording and then for a couple of the, the behind the scenes videos where we were uh, uh, appearing to record in real time together uh, in, in real space together they figured the easiest way to make that happen was to have me there so <laughs> that was fun <laughs> and um, where is it exactly uh, that you went to record uh, they uh, have a couple of studios they work with in L.A. Um, and then I am when I'm not in L.A., I'm in a, in a particular studio in New York. I see. I see. Okay. Hmm. Is there ever a point you see yourself like fully content with the amount of work you've done that you're considering retiring if you haven't already? Or do you just think you love the job so much that you'll be sticking with it until you can't anymore? Like, What's your long-term thoughts on this? Every gig is a new challenge and a new adventure. Excellent. Uh, I'm constantly going to audition and, and booking a new job is always wonderful, whatever that job may happen to be. It honestly seems like you, um, that above all, you just enjoy the work and enjoy the fact that you can do something uh, that comes so naturally to you as well as something that brings you enjoyment uh, and as well as just get paid for it as well. Absolutely. Why shouldn't he? It's a job that I happen to love. I was going to say, fortunate too. (laughs) (laughs) Here we are interviewing Mike Pollock on our gaming commentary channel <laughs> and I'm still and pushing papers at FedEx <laughs> <laughs> ah. hey it's better than nothing hey true but I could be doing voice acting <laughs> very true <laughs> but uh, uh, with, actually with that in mind here's uh, another question I'd like to ask for anybody who actually might let be when we post this up on our channel for those who might be interested would you say it'd probably be difficult, more difficult for those people trying to get into the voice acting gig now than it was for you? The internet has uh, done wonderful things and horrible things because of the internet and uh, various online casting sites. Anyone can be a voice talent pretty much anywhere. So the competition for some gigs has gotten incredibly fierce. And instead of being a one in... 20 or 30 or 40 or one in 200, 300 or 400. So the odds yeah. suddenly become much more uh, stacked against you. Okay, so switching it, subjects from... Oh, go ahead, Claire. So you would say it's been become more difficult? Well, if, you, if, if you're still <laughs> tremendously talented, you're going to book jobs anyway. So you just may not book as many jobs as you might have years ago because there's much more competition. But presumably, if the people producing the material have any sense of what good talent sounds like, they'll book the good talent. Or if they're just interested in finding cheap talent, they'll book cheap talent that sounds cheap. I I think what he means to say is that uh, essentially, uh, metaphorically, the arena has become much larger. Mm and has many more people with uh, now that the internet gives so much access to uh, that sort of role. But by the same token, there are probably more less than talented people as well. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> you're you're competing against talented people and not so talented people. <laughs> so it's not quite as bad as it seems. Yeah. 
Must be an interesting pile of bodies when you stand on the top. <laughs> <laughs> but still, most people book many fewer jobs than they audition for, and that's just the nature of the business. Yes, uh, I have a few friends who either are um, in the business of acting and voice acting and whatnot, or are aspiring to be, and they have expressed to me many times that you will go to many auditions and you will book many fewer jobs than you typically go to auditions for. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But that's what makes the bookings that much more tremendous. Off topic on, you know, from voice acting, um, you know, I shared your opinion about the, um, the, um, AOL's, um, Ice Bucket Challenge, and, you know, it really, uh, you know, touched my heart to hear, you know, what's been going on and how you felt about it and you know it seems to me you know aside you know of voice acting you also care about many other things that's involved in your life you don't let voice acting hinder at your um state of affairs state of affairs yes Sure, and the stuff that I'm recording, most of the stuff I'm recording is stuff no one cares about. And no matter how many times I try to say, hey, I just booked a Pepsi spot, (laughs) people really want to talk about me being Dr. Eggman, so you can't. (laughs) Yeah. I I, I will say I'm trying to avoid talking talking about Eggman. Well, honestly, I'm always interested in... um, the other types of roles that voice actors play because, you know, you'll see and hear someone, even in, you know, other uh, sides of the job, you know, just general acting or animation or uh, directing, and you'll see their names come up on, you know, big, big titles like the Sonic franchise or, you know, for sake of argument, you know, other franchises such as Mario, Zelda, etc., just for games or, you know, anime such as... Um, <clears throat> the uh, Kirby right back at you, and then others as well. But it's always interesting to see all the other jobs that are done in the meantime, because the nature of voice acting and even acting um, is that a lot of it can be done uh, in a much in a much uh, what is it speedier time frame than some people realize. I mean, movies can be uh, essentially finished long before in terms of what uh, needs to be acted out before it is even released because then everything else is spent doing um, <clears throat> the CGI and you know editing the lighting and all the tracks and adding the music and so on and so forth um, so it's always interesting to me, me to see the, uh, the other roles that people have taken that aren't quite as big because there are quite a few I, and I'm sure you can uh, you can attest to it that slide under the radar and largely go unnoticed that the actors or voice actors or even animators may have enjoyed more than some of their larger roles. Sure. What, what people fail to realize, for example, Sonic Boom. When, when we were recording Sonic Boom, eight hours a month. Do the math. There's a whole month that's not being used. So <laughs> I'm not only looking for work out of necessity, but it's part of the joy of what I have, of what I'm trying to do. So I'm always looking for work, and with any luck, always booking work or occasionally booking work. But <laughs> even any gig you get is essentially a temporary, short-lived thing. You mm-hmm. book a commercial, you might be done in half an hour, and there's that gig. You're on to the next one because your gig just lasted half an hour. So like a shark, so- you gotta keep you gotta keep moving. So essentially, it is um, almost. It's it's an occupation that, in and of itself, is the largest collection of temp jobs you will ever have. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, switching topics from uh, voice acting entirely, mostly. When you're not voice acting slash booking, working for or looking for a job slash 
recording. What are your hobbies? I'm uh, surfing the web occasionally, uh, still keeping in touch with radio, especially uh, non-broadcast radio like police scanners, ca- catching the local police activity wherever I happen to be. Um, I've got children that take up a um, large amount of time. Um, but uh, listening to uh, various radio shows and podcasts keeps me busy. Um, what would you say is one of your favorite uh, radio shows and or podcasts? Um, these days, probably The Irrelevant Show from CBC. A very funny sketch comedy show. Hmm. <laughs> um, what inspired you to do comedy voice acting? The fact that I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... That I'm fairly good. good at making people laugh, so I figured I should probably try and do more of that. <laughs> be good careful with that gift. There ever was. Be careful with that gift. You might just kill Gary. <laughs> I was going to say. Oh, hey. I mean, I've nearly done it. I, mean, I put you, I put a you on a commission for a solid half hour at one point. I'm just a very humorous guy. What, oh, what please, can I say? please, please, please. Your humor is not that big. <laughs> we would have to take you to the. We would have had to take you to the hospital if I were there, or when I was there. So, <laughs> fair enough. But yes, what's your have, favorite? What's your favorite type of comedy? Like with all the genres there are, which one would you say is your favorite to watch or partake? Uh, probably sketch comedy, uh, especially radio sketch comedy, because Very you can nice. do things in the uh, in the in the realm of radio that you can't do with on camera stuff. Get away with inappropriate gestures. And, sure, and uh, and <laughs> misleads and misdirection that you can't do on camera. I uh, I can agree with that. Honestly, um, my uh, my father raised me on a lot of uh, sketch comedy radio. Um, it, it it I believe it's I can't I don't know if it's exactly local or not. I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, every Sunday uh, on the drives home from. From church, uh, we would listen to, uh, I believe it was called Prairie Home Companion, mm-hmm. um, which was always one of my favorites, especially since they had, uh, n- in addition to uh, the uh, kind of parody of noir that they did um, on that uh, on that show, they would also have their, I can't, I never looked into it to see if it was more than one person, but the, uh, the voice actor who would uh, create all the sound effects. Yep, Fred um, Newman. Fred Newman? Uh, yep. That's what. That's the name. Yes, thank you. Yep, yes, they're still I going. They're still on. Ab- absolutely adore that. Absolutely mm-hmm. adore that. They're still going, more or less. Yeah, I, uh, I was on Drive Home and actually recently turned into it uh, to see if they were if they were still going, and I was actually very pleased that they still are. <laughs> if um, if anyone who's watching or, or is in the call, of course, has not actually uh, checked out the Prairie Home Companion, it's I guess it's some older humor, technically, but it is definitely still classic and excellent. So, give it a try. Mm-hmm. Did not realize they brushed a suitcase our way. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we did that for free? Hold on now. We've got a professional <laughs> in the room. We can't be doing things for free anymore. Come on. <laughs> Uh, getting about that time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, does yeah. does does anyone else have any other questions? Mm, can't think of anything. Then perhaps we should yeah. wrap up. Here. Yeah, I'm out of uh, questions over here. <laughs> Running out of legitimate questions, but Mr. Mike, we're gonna. I'm gonna try to come up with the most ridiculous question on the spot while still oh. being safe for work. Hold on oh, now. No. Oh, we have to now. <laughs> We've run out of questions. All well, right. I mean, it's been said. You've called down, you've called down the lightning. <laughs> All right. Let us say that you are stranded on a desert island, and you may only bring three objects of your choice with you. What three objects do you choose? Uh, a smartphone... Oh, you. <laughs> Which covers several dozen objects in one. Yes. Um, 
that will of course keep me uh, in tune with radio. Um, <laughs> Some type of recording gear so that I can still get some work done. You could and save that with the smartphone, but go on. <laughs> yeah, well, you need to get a better microphone, so I guess a oh, microphone for the smartphone. There we go. Uh, that's the bare minimum that you would need to accomplish that. And ice cream. Oh, I like that <laughs> answer. <laughs> that, is, that is very good. Ben and or Jerry would suffice. Ah, nice not both. I mean, we Boys. can we can allow both if it's in the same can. Yeah, if they count as uh, one, then yes, Ben and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, Ben and Jerry is just one. There brand. we go. Excellent choice. See, I've one of the most remarkable answers I heard, where you know they weren't going to take it as a vacation, but good turnaround on that was actually duct tape. And I thought about it. There's so many uses you could use on a dessert dial with that. So I'm kind of surprised I didn't hear that. But hey, I like your answer better. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you get too. work done, cover some bases with the smartphone and ice cream to, uh, you know, enjoy the ride. Why not? There mm-hmm. you go. <laughs> Just have an airplane fly over and drop those suitcases like, thank you, Mr. Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the ice cream coming. <laughs> <laughs> See, if man really can live on ice cream alone, we'll find out. <laughs> oh, well, I think we need to. Well, I believe if that is all for the evening, yes. You all right? so I guess I got one last question. Oh, okay. Well, on the question. same vein of weirdness. Oh, what have I said? If you were what to is, run right? into, Sorry. if you were to run into one of the characters you voice act, any of them, uh, make take your sheet. May I choose your own? Choose the. T- <laughs> wow. You'll get it. Zoom tight. It's it's okay. Words they they're there. I got they're it. They're there. <laughs> You if you book? could run into any of the if any of the characters that you voice act, choose one, and what advice would you give them? There. Since I know how it's done, I can never forget the fact that they're fictional. And if it wasn't for me, they wouldn't speak. Ooh. <laughs> so you see. <laughs> so you would give them a heaping dose of karma. I suppose Just... I would tell them to find their own voice. <laughs> go up to one, go up to one of them. Keep making us money. <laughs> well, I'm out of questions. All right, oh. Mr. Pollock, I appreciate you um, giving us the opportunity to speak with you. Agreed. And, uh, I appreciate everything that you've answered for us, just because I'm eventually going to try to get into voice acting, and having this experience was. Excellent. So thank you for your professionalism and taking the time to answer these questions. Certainly. Thanks so much for asking. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that said... Um, Send off time? Yeah, let's... Uh, right. sh- shall we do a musical number or are we just going to sign off? Uh, we're, we're just... <laughs> we'll, let's we'll sign, sign off. off. We'll sign off. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, no musical number? No, 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 not, not tonight. Not tonight. Not okay. No, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Well, I guess if that's all that needs to be said um, to all those that are watching and listening in. Mostly um, listening. <laughs> yeah, mostly listening. Yeah, you're right. Um, we appreciate your time hearing us speak with uh, Mr. Mike Pollock. And, uh, we hope you have a wonderful night and happy gaming, my friends. Thank you so much. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Why are we Thank coming you. apart? Thank you. Good night. Uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. So, everybody. uh, yep. Uh, good night. This was the Blue Hedgehog <coughs> 2010, Tog by 2222, and uh, Moonlight Kitsune. And Lord. Drazar. Dra- just, Draz- let's get that Ryan. Ryan. Um, yeah, Ryan. Ryan works. And as always, my name is Evan with our guest, Mike Pollock.